What's up? What's good? What's up? What's, what's good? What's up? What's up? What's good? What's going on? What's up? How you doing? Hi, what's up? I'm back. I'm back today. I know it's been a second. It's been a little second here, but I'm back, okay? And do I got a topic for you? And do I got things to say on today's topic? And if you can't read, God bless you. The title is Mental Illness and Art. How to how these two things work together, how they work against each other, and my personal experience. Okay. Uh, before we get to that, though, this video is sponsored by Dick. I ain't got no sponsor. I guess it's spon actually it's sponsored by this painting here that uh, we're gonna continue working on. That I don't touch this thing unless the camera's recording. If you know anything from my motivation video, then you know that the whole point of having the camera is to help me paint. So let's get started. I'm gonna start on this painting. I got some notes right here to help me this time. Um, first thing I wanna to touch on is the romanticization, okay, of, of mental illness and art. You see it all over the place. You see it with Jean-Michel Jean Basquiat. You see it with, you see it with uh, Vincent Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh, if you will, other artists of the like. Um, people tend to say that dark minds make beautiful work and things like that that you must suffer for your work, that there's a correlation between creativity and depression and all that kind of stuff. Now, not to say that this is wholly untrue, okay? I'm not saying that. What I do want to talk, what I do want to say on this, though, is how I believe that because of this, this uh, link that may or may not be there, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this kind of thing, but uh, that may or may not be there, that there has been a romanticization of of um, mental illness in art. And I think it's frankly offensive. Um, and uh, it's, it's kind of sad and it's kind of gross. And I just don't like it, okay? Me uh, mental illness. And uh, today I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be touching on depression and uh, depression mixed with other, other mental illnesses and mental conditions and stuff. Like a cocktail, if you will. But um, they're, not, uh, they're not fun. They, it really sucks. Um, depression really fucking sucks. And <clears throat> I don't like when people equate uh, being, to being depressed as like you need this pain to make great art because I don't necessarily think this is true. Um, I don't think you need to be depressed to make great art. Uh, and in fact, it can hinder your art making. It, it, it can, you know. And yeah, there may, there may or may not be some kind of correlation or link between... Uh, great art and people with depression and other and drug abuse problems or whatever, you know, like there may or may not there There are cases and examples, but it's never the end-all be-all, okay and I, I Really just don't like it and I, I really want you to know that when I talk about this I'm talking about it from my own perspective and from a from as a realistic and grounded perspective as I can convey So how am I afflicted? What's my relationship to being mentally ill? Well, when I was a young, when I was a tween, a little teenager, I began feeling chronic depression. Ooh. I developed anxiety, I think, a few years prior, but I'm not going to touch on that today. Um, uh, but depression happened when I moved. I moved to a new town, new place when I was 12, and I was leaving all my old friends for this new place, and... The more I lived there, I retreated to, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really relate to any of the people in my school at the time, um, at least not for a while, like not for like till my my second year of being at the school, and th then at that point did I feel a bit more, like I, I do kind of like I can find a place here, you know. But when I first moved there, I was really isolated. I isolated myself a lot. I I felt like no one liked me. I felt like an outcast. And so I retreated to my, my Xbox and my video games and playing video games with my friends. But what would happen is that the anger I had and the frustration I had would, would bubble up during these gameplay sessions. And I would, I would rage. I would be pissed. I'd be mean. I'd be volatile. I would be a very unpleasant person to be around. And I was young. So, I, you know, I've certainly get forgiven myself for that kind of thing. And, you know, if some people have not forgiven me for that kind of thing. I leave that's, that's to them. I leave that for them. And I won't bother them. But that is the truth. You know, it's the ugly truth of, of, of how 
this kind of crept up for me and how it manifested in my early adolescence. And it just got worse and worse. And it got to the point when I got to high school, I had to see a psychiatrist, okay? And I was dealing with really, really heavy things. I'm not going to go into these details, but it was really unpleasant. And um, I, I was dealing with these, and I didn't really have an outlet other than video games. But in high school, I picked drawing back up. And like casual drawing, you know, like I would, I had like sketchbooks and I would just doodle or doodle in the margins of my notes or whatever, you know, like that's kind of what I had going on at the time. And, and I was fine with that, you know, and it, and I, I did use it, it began at a certain point began to become an outlet and I was interested in making music and I was interested in a lot of artistic uh, forms of expression and invested in art, especially music. I was really into hip hop when I got into high school. Of course, I was Kanye pilled, so you know what are you gonna do? I, I still look. I'm not gonna lie. I do still like his music a lot. Uh, in fact, I kind of love his music still to this day. Okay, but this doesn't mean I sign on or co-sponsor things he says and blah blah blah. I just enjoy the damn beats and the damn rhymes. Okay, motherfucker, get off my dick. And as I got older. Uh, my my depression, specifically my depression, again, we're not talking about anything else, my depression uh, did get a lot better. There would be times where I would go months in late high school, months without uh, feeling any real symptoms or really long episodes. And I didn't even notice. I was just happy to be with my friends and spend time. And I definitely didn't feel it when I first got to college. I was so excited. It was a new world. There's new things happening. I was so I was just so invested in just being like reinventing myself and becoming a new person and all that fun make believe land stuff that college puts you in. <laughs> so when I got to college, I was dealing more so with some anxiety than depression at points. But then there would be points where I would get fairly depressed. But I was always around people, so there would always be people around. And that is something I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit. One of the things, if you're depressed, one of the things you really got to do surround yourself with friends if you can and if you got to do it online or in person get some friends around you seriously okay this is my this is my very serious heating to you if you're depressed if you're feeling chronic depression days on end with being depressed surround yourself with people you love okay people that you like to be around for real that is one of the key things that will help you it's not going to cure your depression okay i'm not fucking selling you a cure but that is something that will very much help you dealing with the depression. Having people around is it lifts the weight, and it's not like you're gonna spill your guts and and put you know put this burden on you on them. Like that's not what's happening. Spending time with your friends is it distracts you from these thoughts, it distracts you from these emotions, and and you're not burdening anyone. And the only reason it feels like you're bur- being you're burdening people is because it's such a burden to you where you feel like even expressing these emotions or even having to convey these emotions to other people, you feel like you're, you're putting that burden on them. But what you're really doing is you're helping yourself and your friends want to help you too and they're happy to help you, okay? A good friend is happy to help you. And of course, boundaries, limits, come on, communication people, we've been over this, all right? We've been over this. Anyway, tangent over. So, you know, I was surrounded by people, so I wasn't too concerned with a lot of the things I was experiencing, okay? Um, and I got older, I got a little older. And I think what I would call the f- next time I had like a serious mental kind of break or strain or something. And when I say mental break, I don't mean a full breakdown, like like s- complete spiral and the, throwing shit on my wall and all, you know, whatever, you know, whatever your image is conjuring your mind, it's not that extreme. In that sense, it is very heavily emotionally heavy and difficult to deal with, uh, something like that. But it's not, not what you're probably imagining. Um, that was when the pandemic hit, and when the pandemic hit, at first I was I actually was doing surprisingly well. Uh, I began I was isolating myself, but I did have some friends around me at the time, and uh, well, I'm gonna try and keep a long story short, but I was doing my best with. Um, keeping my life uh, in line and like staying healthy and meditating and practicing different uh, like forms of uh, meditation and stoic practices and uh, creating art. And I was, 
I was doing really great for myself at that point. Um, but then I had a falling out, and I'm not getting into details about that with some with some with some of my friends at the, in that t- at the time. And I moved back home. Okay, I moved back home from college, so I was no longer living on campus. And this is a time, yeah, there's still students on campus during the pandemic. A lot of students went home. I was one of the few that stayed. Um, but I decided, you know what, I'm going home. And so I went home, and I was back in my mom's. I had no job. I wanted to drop out. I had no prospects. And, um, and I'm not really talking about art too much in this and how art relates to it. I understand that. Um, at this time I was an art student and I was making art and I was doing that whole thing. And, um, I was really into art in the sense of having an outlet and using it to connect with people. And like, I being like, I'm an artist, I draw, I draw. And I want to show people my drawings and stuff and make it a social thing. Um, and that's kind of how I was perceiving it. So uh, when I was going through this moment of like, you know, improving myself, meditating, exercising, all that, I made one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. Um, put that on the screen right now. It's called, what's it called? Global Pandemic Curie Arts, paper cutouts and stuff. I was really happy with it. Um, I was really excited about it. But then I moved home, okay? And I had no friends uh, from college and everyone was inside because of the pandemic and no one could really hang out too much because they were scared of the virus and all this, and very under- understandably so, you know. But that's kind of just what was happening, and I had no. I wanted to drop out. I had no prospects. I wanted to get a van due to the advice of a really bad therapist I had. Um, all that kind of stuff. And if that therapist is watching, that's how I felt. Okay, I uh, wasn't gonna buy a van, and I was gonna drop out of school and work a security job for a year and I was really depressed man I was going through a lot of shit okay I'm gonna leave these here it's just gonna stay like that um I'm gonna get this I'm gonna define this hand some more thank god I did not do that I I was I was I had some sense talked into me by my brothers they both were like Kenneth this is the fucking stupidest shit (laughs) this is a dumb idea dude I'm not even like and you know good like don't sugarcoat stuff if you really feel like your friend is or your relative or someone's fucking their shit up. Don't sugarcoat it. Just tell them how you feel. And I really respected that my brothers did that for me. So I had a plan. I was going to go back to school, work online, uh, work in my hometown and do all that kind of stuff from home and get financial aid and actually have my own place to live. So I was, you know, I was working on, I was drawing and drawing here and there, um, taking, doing some of my art classes and stuff, you know, um, as I went, uh, so let me, let me jump, okay? Let me, let me, that's kind of been my, my story in a sense. Um, and so I was going down the spiral and I was having problems with, with myself, my self-esteem and all that kind of stuff. And when I moved to this new place uh, by myself, I was meeting new people and I was being, becoming inspired again and feeling like, oh, this is like, I am like, I am my own person and I am valid in my existence and all that good stuff. And that was really, that was uh, quite the uh, quite the wake-up call for me. So I came back to my college town. I had a new, new sense of confidence, and I felt pretty good. And I just went back to school. I was working again uh, um, in my college town and doing all that. And uh, I didn't really have any... Uh, I think what, like the following, I moved into January, the following February, I had a depressive bout. I didn't really, I just kind of was feeling it. I was lonely, isolated, because uh, I just had all these like intrusive thoughts going through my head. And with those thoughts, I, I was just isolating myself. And that's another thing. Depression will reward you for doing uh, destructive things to yourself. Uh, now, I'm not a psychologist, but what it feels like to me is that when I'm in a depressed mood or a depressive state, uh, I want to do things that I know will be harmful, like isolate myself and be away from other people, okay? That is part of what makes depression such a bitch, is that it, 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 it directs you to do things and makes you feel any modem of feeling good or comfortable in doing things that you don't like doing or things that aren't right to do for yourself or aren't healthy to do, like dealing in um, using like uh, uh, an outlet, a substance outlet of some kind that might not be helpful, like smoking or drinking or something. 
um, or isolating yourself or hurting yourself or anything like that. And excuse me. So that is uh, uh, one of the ugly things. Okay. So let me tie it into art now. Okay. Um, I'm I kind of give it a narrative. I'm going to jump to graduation. I am now graduated from college, and for the past month, I want to say ever since I graduated, I have been depressed. Okay, I have been depressed on and off. It's been going in waves, and it's been the most kind of sporadic. I've really dealt with depression a long time, and um, it, it it's it's been uh, yeah, it's been hard. Um, and yeah, I have a like I said before. I have a good support system, so I'm, I have good people around me, and you know I'm not alone, and it's not the end of the world, but it's been tough. Okay, it's, it has been quite tough, and so that's why I've been. That's why I need to put this camera here to motivate me to work on this painting. It's always in here instead. I want to watch videos. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. Um, instead, is doing this. So uh, at least trying to and trying to make videos that are relevant. And that, that share my experience and maybe can help people again. Um, so art has been a way for me to have dialogue with myself and my sketchbooks. And maybe one day uh, we can go through some of my sketchbooks and I can kind of talk about this more in depth. But I would write down my thoughts, my feelings, things I'm experiencing. And not like directly, like I feel that I would just write words and sentences and draw pictures and that kind of thing and relate it to kind of like what's going on in my life and like how I'm feeling and that kind of thing. Um, and that was like the main way I would use, that's how I, when I started drawing in high school, that's how I was using art as that kind of, that kind of outlet, you know? And, uh, nowadays it hasn't really changed too much, except I've wanted to, uh, take art from being a strictly therapeutic private thing um, to being what I do and what I do in my professional career, um, you know, and to, to get a living wage, uh, through doing art to, 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 to be able to make enough money to live. That's, that's my goal as an artist. Okay. Nothing bigger than that. Uh, right now I want to just make enough money where I can live and, and do what I love. So, and I found that out through, through being, uh, through using art this way. And that's just kind of what happened. You know, I use video games that way for a long time, but I wouldn't want to be a professional gamer, okay? That's just not my thing uh, as much as it anymore. I prefer playing single-player games and playing alone. And, you know, maybe that's an extension of how I used to be on. But that's, again, another, another topic. I uh, apologize. I tend to ramble and go on tangents and not finish thoughts a lot. So, because um, I'm trying to, trying to keep it flowing, trying to work on this. But hopefully it makes sense to you. Um, it always been a dialogue art and drawing and stuff. And it still is. This painting, for example, that we're doing right now, is is that. This is inspired from the this, this scene, this park scene. Is Well, I went to, when I first moved to my new town, I, I went to a park and um, I was sitting down at this park and I really wanted to interact. There's like a whole thing of people selling art and stuff. And I wanted to go and interact and talk to people, but I just couldn't. And this is more so an anxiety thing, but I was just so anxious. I was so anxious. I couldn't talk to anyone. And now, uh, here, and then there I was, I was getting depressed because I was so anxious and it was just, you know, it's not really fun. Um, but that's what this is. This is kind of like what inspired me to draw this way under the trees, this kind of thing. So that is what this is about. Um, so yeah, art's been that kind of thing for me. And I think it can be that for a lot of other people. Um, I like painting too because it's physical. I like getting physical with it and, you know, like coming down and eh, I'm going to just, shit, <laughs> eh, I'm just going to, eh, we're going to just get that shoe. <laughs> I'm just going to put some brown in that shoe. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Some brown in that shoe. We got some brown in that shoe. Uh, <laughs> uh, and have fun, you know, and admit, being like a kid again a little bit and just having a good time. That's mostly what what I want through my art uh, to do is also in, engage the viewer in a sense of exploration and playfulness and just kind of being carried away in a thought when they look and they daydream and they go away to a different place that is not as shitty as this one. That's how it's been therapeutic. I've always, I've drawn for a long time um, 
and being able to express my thoughts and feelings into a drawing is powerful. It is really powerful. Um, that's why I really uh, advocate for art as a therapeutic practice uh, for yourself. Again, it's not, it's not Prozac. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a thing. It's a practice. Okay, like meditation, like exercise, like anything. It's a practice. When you put yourself into that practice, you give yourself a sense of validity and drive and meaning to your existence. That is powerful. That supersede. That can supersede uh, such negative mental ailments if you let it and if you if you work to it and you work through it and it's not easy okay i'm not saying it's easy and it's it is it's it's way easier said than done and it, right now if you're depressed you're watching this you're definitely not feeling that motivation i know this and you're coming here because you're you might be listlessly looking for something to help and look i'm here for you okay i'm here to help you oh if you have no one i'm that someone in this moment through this uh, I don't know, the parasocial kind of thing. But look, reach out to me. Uh, I'm going to put my all my links down below, okay? Reach out if you need some support from me because <laughs> I'm here, man. I got you. We'll get you making some art. We'll do what we can, okay? I got you. But um, I want to talk about something that happened to me the other day that kind of is relevant to to my current state. And uh, so there, in my current town, they have this uh, kind of like market, like a open street market for people to come and sell their art. And I went with my girlfriend. She's very supportive. She's lovely. And so she always helps me with things like this and that kind of thing. Um, but I went and when I got there, I just couldn't help but feel really bad. I felt really terrible. I felt like no one really cared. I took every passing glance as like a rejection. It was, it was, I was really in my head and it was a cocktail of, of things, of, um, of depression, anxiety, obsession, this kind of thing. And it really was not, um, that was not fun. And I was just in my sketchbook. People would pass by and be like, oh, hey. And I would go, eh. you know. Well, normally at this kind of things back in my college time, I'd be very, like, expressive, engaging. I'd be super down because I think I just had a lot of confidence, you know. I just had lots of confidence, and I just was uh, clearly lacking that um, yesterday. <laughs> then my girlfriend was like, come on. She gave me a little kick in the butt, and I really appreciate her for that. She just keeps it real with me. She's like, look, you're not going to. Like you're not like you know you're not gonna get anything out of just sitting on your sketchbook not talking to people doing that kind of thing and she was very right she was very right and so I did kind of was like fine whatever so I started just kind of doing my thing talking to people and and I got up and I was walking around and um, doing this but I want to tell you this experience to illustrate how um, it can be really hard even if you're in environments like ah oh, you know I'm selling my art I'm here with other artists I'm here engaging. Those things, when you have, you know, issues with the old dome, it can be very exhausting and overwhelming and difficult to engage with and be in the present moment. And it's not fun, man. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. And um, it's hard to get through. So I'm currently dealing with my own, my own, uh, uh, you know, monkey on my shoulder or parakeet in my ear or whatever expression you want to use um with with my own stuff and it's it just you know i'm going through a really really sharp transitional period and it's just really hard it's really hard um so where does this lead us i've talked about my own experience with mental health how i've used art in it and how um art it informs my art and this experience in this new place where i don't really know what what i'm doing <laughs> Uh, my main point, and this is my catchphrase, okay? My main point, okay, is that um, you're not alone. I'm not alone. Uh, there's artists and there's depressed people and there's depressed artists. And as long as those three groups of people exist, we're not alone, okay? We, uh, and like I said, you know, I'm here for you, man. Like, if you, if you are struggling... If you stumble upon this video because you're an artist and you're struggling and you're depressed, hit me up. Discord's in the link. Talk to me. 
I'm, I want to support you in whatever way I can in a reasonable way and not like I'm not going to step in and change your life, but you know, I'll lend my advice if you need it. Or maybe you have advice for me. The other way goes the other way around. Something I want you to take away is to never stop making art. Never quit. Okay? If you want to change mediums, change mediums. You want to change the materials you use, change the materials you use. You want to change the environment, change the environment. But don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up. Okay? Um, success Success is, uh, is sort of a funny thing, especially in our uh, time and age where we have these expectations of what success is. But to be successful as an artist, doesn't, it's not, that's not the point of art. It's never the point of art. If, it, if that was the point of art, uh, we would have some, some really boring art all the time, everywhere you look. But that's not the point. The point is to pull something from out of you and turn it into something that when someone else who, is, has, who has that thing in them can, could see it, okay, in the work. They can see that, okay? One of the things, that's one of the many things with art. So, you're feeling down, do that. Try your best. Make something with that in your heart, okay? If something is, is really got you down, if something's really pushing your, pushing, pushing down on you, take a piece of paper, take a pencil, and scribble over the fucking page. Do that first. Set that aside. Try something different. Take that. Set that aside. Do another thing. Do that. And then you're like, I'm tired of drawing. Get up. Get a pastel. Mark a canvas on your wall. Or mark a canvas on an easel. Or, you know, just start applying paint to it. Make a background. Make an underpainting. And then maybe work in some flowers or some detail. Don't make it too fucking complicated. Don't make it all these things where it's like, oh, it has to be, I want it to be like this and this realistic. I need the lighting to be. Don't think about that shit. Don't think about that shit. If you're practicing that, that's a different story. But if you're expressing and you're creating and you're in that raw moment of vulnerability with yourself and your, and your, and your canvas, don't worry about that. Just do it. It'll come out. It'll come out. Okay. If, if that's the kind of thing you've been practicing, it'll come out. But this is, I don't think it's necessarily the time to practice uh, a new thing or, you know, something like it, like I want to practice lighting. Cause that might get, this is, you know, this is your own discretion, but it might get you really frustrated and it might want, make you want to quit. It might make you want to quit. Okay. And it might make you never want to pick up a pencil again. So don't do that to yourself. Okay. Enjoy it. God damn. Enjoy it. Have an experience. Okay. This is an experience for me. This is always an experience coming to work on this. I'm barely... I'm thinking, I'm drawing, I'm talking, I'm doing all sorts of things all at once. And this is quite the activity. Like, let's paint and draw TV, okay? That's a goat. Okay, he's a goat. That motherfucker motherfucker beast. Look, man, please, for the love of God, just make some work for yourself, okay? Don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what what the art community says. Don't worry about those YouTube videos say about proportions and all that fun stuff. And that stuff is important. If you really want to like get into realistic making and making things look real and that kind of thing, great. Or stylized and real, whatever. Great. Do that. But make sh- but do that when you got a clear head. <laughs> do that when you're like, you know, you have set yourself up and you got a healthy routine and you are dedicating nine to twelve to working on practicing your fundamentals. If that's what you're wanting to do, that's when you do it, when you can do it, when you plan to do it. But if you don't know what you're doing, don't just be like, well, I guess I'll practice my fundamentals. And you'll just get frustrated. You're not, you're not ready to fail in that, in that mindset. You're not ready to fail. But what you are ready to do is you're ready to just fucking put some shit down. Okay, you are ready to put some shit down. That's what you want to do. That's what you're, you need to do. You need to do some shit. Okay, you don't need to worry about developing and working too hard right in this moment. You're depressed. You're going through some shit. Just work on something. Don't even, don't get too concerned with uh, the, a lot of stuff. Just do what you want to do. You like painting flowers? Dude, paint some flowers. You like drawing some flowers? Draw some flowers. You like doing some random shit, like constructing things on top of things and making a really layered and detailed image down to the fucking nines? Do that shit. Don't worry about anything else. Just do it. Just make some shit. And then guess what? A year from now, you look back on that thing and go, damn, 
That shit just came out of me. And it went, yeah, it did. That's what you gotta do, man. That's what you gotta fucking do. So, never stop making art. Mental illness is a pain. It is fu- depression, okay? I, I, I say mental illness. It is all quite a pain. But depression, especially, is a great pain. It really it takes you to some dark places in the mind um, that... F- Frankly, it's, it's, it's quite terrifying how many youth, how many kids are experiencing this right now, okay? How lonely and isolated and self-destructive these kids are now, okay? And if you're watching this, you're a young person and you're an artist, please follow my advice. It, it will help you, okay? And you're never alone. And there's people who love you and have got your back. Okay. Um, With that being said, that's everything I've got for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I've hoped what I've said resonates with you a little bit. I hope it helps you. I'm going to keep working on this. Okay. Um, And you'll see in a different state next time. Okay. Um, But please take care of yourself. If you found this and you're feeling depressed and you're hopeless, I'm going to put the uh, hotline in the description. Just give that a try if you've never done it. Um, And uh, if you need someone to reach out to, you want some advice from me, I'm, uh, look, I I got like two, I got like 40 subs, man. Join my Discord. Come chat. Come send me a message. I'll I'll give you any wisdom, any, any advice I can give you at all, so... Thank you for watching. Go to my Instagram, follow me, go to my website, buy some stuff, whatever, if you can do that kind of thing. Bless you, love you, take care. Goodbye. Yeah, the video never stopped. I'm on my way to the art store. Oh no, my bag broke, now my kid's on the floor.